by popular demand, here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup to help our new fabs and besties find some of our favorite videos. This week is all about the tech. From cell phones to laptops, we've got you covered. And these crafts also make great stocking stuffers for the season. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I am going to make a phone booth for a doll using cardboard, an X-Acto knife, and we recommend adult supervision when dealing with sharp objects. Card stock, a nail file, elastic cord, thin cardboard from a cereal box, clear plastic from packaging, craft paint, printables from our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com, and glue. Since we are constructing this out of cardboard, it can be resized to fit almost any size doll. Using a doll as a guide, I start by measuring a piece of cardboard a few inches above the doll's head. And I am going to round off the top, cut it out, use it as a pattern to cut three, draw a rectangle in the center of two of the cardboard cutouts, use an X-Acto knife to cut out the center, cut two squares to use as a base. I cut another piece of cardboard that is the same shape as the top of the panels. Begin gluing the cardboard together, starting with the base, Followed by the panels, with three sides glued together, I begin covering the raw edges with hot glue. Paint it with craft paint, but I think this needs a few details to help cover some of the imperfections. So I cut thin strips of cardstock and glue them on for trimming. Use scrap pieces of cardboard to make the trim more prominent, then paint it to match. Give it a worn antique look by brushing on a little black paint making sure to keep the lines in the same direction, giving a little extra attention to the corners. Adding the same details and painting style to the smaller piece, cut a piece of plastic from packaging to fit the cutout. Glue it in place, paint a piece of cardstock to match, cut the painted cardstock into thin strips, glue the strips to the plastic, stack and glue pieces of cardboard, cut triangles, glue them underneath, cover the raw edges with paper, Paint it to make a shelf. Cut a rectangular piece of cardboard, trace and cut several more. I cut the center out of some, giving the long rectangles a slight curve. I begin stacking and gluing them together. Then glue the smaller rectangles at the ends. Sand the edges smooth with a nail file. Paint it to make the receiver. To make the phone inside, I cut out the phone printable, trace it onto a piece of cardboard from a cereal box, cut it out, then trace and cut several more, glue them together, paint it, glue the printable to the front, cut a piece of clear plastic from packaging, cutting a small square out of one end. Fold it over, making a crease, glue it to the front of the printable to hold the receiver. Glue on elastic cord to connect the two, then glue the phone above the shelf. Then glue on the small piece of the wall. Cut out the pages and the cover of the phone book, Starting with the first page, I fold it back on the line, then in an accordion style fashion, I flip it over and fold it again. On the back side, I take the other sheet that has four pages in a row and glue the first page to the back. Then continue the accordion style folding. Folding the fourth page down, then glue the final page 
on top. Go back and glue the necessary pages together so that I end up with four double-sided pages. Glue the phone book cover to another piece of paper, cut it out, fold in on the lines, then glue the pages to the spine. Add more stacks of pages to make the book more solid, cut out the telephone sign, glue it to the booth, and you're done. Happy crafting! When I am going to make a computer, I start by looking through the commercial ads for like TV screens and monitors that might work for my doll size. After carefully cutting them out, I glue them onto cardstock. Leaving space above the keyboard. And I would glue the mouse to a piece of foam. I carefully cut out the monitor, cut out the keyboard, leaving a little bit of space above it so that I can bend it back so that the keyboard can lay on an incline. Now I'm going to cut a triangle out of my cardstock, fold it over, apply some glue to the top of the triangle, attach your monitor, and you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make an updated arcade game for our dolls that can be used as a phone stand so we can play real games. Using printables from our blog, recycled paperboard, recycled cardboard, paper, paint, beads, and glue. I start by printing out the printables from our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com and we will put the link in the description box below. We print out a total of four sheets that can be used as a template. There is a left-hand side, right-hand side, the top of the arcade machine, including the screen, and the bottom. We also included a few freestanding printables in case you would like to make your own designs. And we have two designs available on our blog our retro design that we call Frogcade Games, and our super cute froggy design that we titled Froggy Stuff. And I don't know if these are supposed to be frogs. I was just trying to make something that was really cute. They actually remind me of Meeps from Roblox. Once the printables have been printed, carefully cut them out, and I cut very slowly so that I make sure to stay on the line. After cutting them out, I place them onto my workspace in the order that they will be assembled. And for the most part, they are on the printables in order. I just went back and added another piece to go under the controls. And it can be found on the printable for the right-hand side. Now that we have all of our pieces cut out, we can use them as a template for the paperboard. Take a recycled paperboard box like a cereal box and cut it down the side and across the bottom to open it up so it can lay flat. Place the printable on top, starting with the sides and carefully trace around it. 
cut on the lines drawn, I place the paperboard cutout onto my workstation and repeat with the other side. Once both sides have been cut out, it is time to start on the front. So I take the first printable, which is the very top of the machine, place it onto paperboard, trace around it, remove the printable, sketch tabs on both sides, and in front. Cut on the lines drawn, line up a ruler to the tab, I use a mechanical pencil without any lead, and score along the line, turn it over, and score it again, so that we can fold it over and it has a nice sharp edge. Repeat on the other tabs, place it onto our work area, and repeat for the next printable, which happens to be the sign, so we have to make a few small changes. After cutting out the paperboard with the tabs, I have to cut the side tabs a little shorter to fit the side of the arcade game. Then I cut out a few more pieces of paperboard without the tabs to glue onto the front to make it stronger. Then I am ready to move on to the next piece, which we cut out with the tabs without any adjustments. And the same goes for the screen. For the control boards, I cut three layers of paperboard without tabs for the solid printable and seven for the other. Stack and glue the layers together, then I go back to cutting out the paperboard and adding the tabs. For this piece, I added tabs to the sides, bottom, and top. Then for the next one, I added them to the sides and bottom. And for the last piece, I only added the tabs to the sides. Now that everything is cut out, we can start to assemble the arcade game. I take one of the sides and the top, glue the tab onto the side of the machine, and I'm just using a glue stick to glue them together, making sure to line up the edges. Next, we add the sign and we glue on the side tab, then glue the tab from the top behind it. Once the glue has dried, I take the next piece. This one has a slight angle, so I glue the tabs to the side, then glue it to the tab underneath the sign. And all of the pieces should fit together and interlock using the tabs. And I just patiently hold them until the glue dries. The piece we just added has a bottom tab, and we need to make sure it is folded forward then we can attach the paperboard for the screen, fold the bottom tab of the screen or monitor forward. Then we are going to skip over the next section for the controls and attach the next section. Remember, this one has tabs on all four sides. Then continue adding the paperboard just as before until I reach the bottom. I take the remaining side and glue it onto the tabs to create an arcade game shaped box. Now I am going to take all of my paperboard and paint the edges. For more support, I cut and glued together a few pieces of paperboard and glued it underneath for a base. Turn it around and glue cardboard across the back to brace it. Paint the base, then paint around the edges of the layered paperboard that we will use for the controls. allow it to dry. For the retro arcade game, I painted the edges black, 
And for our cute little green meep game, we painted the edges white. Once it has completely dried, we can start gluing on the printables. I glued down the printables for the controls. The thinner one should be solid while the thicker one has the printed buttons. Glue them together, staggered, leaving enough space to fit the cell phone, creating a ledge for the bottom of the cell phone to rest against. Begin gluing the other printables onto the box. And I pretty much started in the same order that I put the box together, with the sides first, then the top, the sign, underneath the sign, the monitor or screen, skip the control panels, then add the front, the piece underneath, and the bottom of the machine. Over the last two tabs, glue on the control panel, glue on beads to make the controls 3D, to make an arcade game for our dolls to play. And if we want our dolls to play a real game, we can lean our cell phone against the back wall to use as a monitor. And I might even use this as my new phone stand. And you're done. Happy crafting! cutting pictures out of the ads for DVDs, Blu-rays, and cell phones. After you neatly cut it out, apply glue to the back and lay it on a piece of craft foam. To make a Blu-ray, I just glue the picture onto a piece of blue craft foam. Then I just cut it out. You can even glue jewels and beads on the back for a fun deco den look. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make headphones for a doll using a plastic bottle, small stickers, buttons, a marker, rubber bands, and glue. I start by cleaning and removing the stickers from a plastic bottle. Carefully cut a section from the bottle to get a tube. Using a permanent marker, I'm going to draw the headband onto the tube. Placing rubber bands onto the tube, evenly spaced apart, helps to draw straight lines. Once the ink has dried, remove the rubber bands, place a button where the ear cup should go, trace around it, repeat on the other side, cut it out, carefully going around the lines drawn, glue two buttons together, repeat to make two, glue them inside the cutout to make the headphones. Add a small sticker on the outside for decoration. It may be helpful to measure around the doll's head to get the appropriate size. Use a larger or smaller bottle to resize the headphones to fit almost any size doll. And you're done. Happy crafty!
for joining us for this My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time. Bye!